Work is typically viewed as the place where we ought to be serious, something that they are perceived to be of lower authority if they make any kind of joke or laugh about anything. Something that, because they are in a meeting with the stakeholders, they cannot allow themselves to engage in humor because all that the stakeholders care about is the performance of the company. In fact, interest in the potential benefits of using humor in the workplace has come to life only in the last two decades. Research on humor at work was limited until the 90s. In the late 80s and beginning of 90s, research found that humor at work can relieve stress and stimulate creativity as a result of an improvement in communication, rapport and teamwork. All this can result in an increase in productivity and happiness. One study, including 1,000 company executives, found that 91% of executives agree that a sense of humor is important for career advancement. 84% of the executives felt that employees with a sense of humor do a better job. Another study of 737 CEOs found that 98% of CEOs prefer job candidates with a sense of humor to those without one. On the other hand, another study found that a sense of humor was the most important factor in forming impressions of supervisors. According to the survey, employees who rated their supervisors high in sense of humor reported higher job satisfaction and rated other supervisor qualities higher than did those who rated their supervisors low in sense of humor. A powerful aspect of humor is it can influence and change employee behavior. It plays a big role in employee morale, trust and credibility. Creating an organizational culture that supports the use of humor is a conscious effort. The process of making humor a priority takes time, energy and commitment from the executives. The key ingredient in creating an organizational culture that engages in humor is the right people. Working with people who choose to view the world lightly and positively will cultivate a certain st style of humor. Working with people who choose to view the world a little bit darker and more sarcastically will foster another style of humor. Efforts to promote humor in the workplace are appealing to employees but also to management. The reason for this is humor gives both groups a greater feeling of control. For the employee, humor is considered to be a tool for having control over stress levels and relationships with colleagues. For management, it creates a sense of control over employees, leading to an increase in their motivation, productivity and efficiency. Business consultants specialized in the promotion of humor at work view humor as a planned activity rather than a spontaneous social activity. And the type of humor that they recommend is one that does not question the corporate status quo. These consultants are hired by organizations to conduct entertaining workshops and seminars where they teach employees how to incorporate humor at work. There does not, however, exist any empirical research proving the effectiveness of these interventions in business, but their popularity suggests that employees and management both consider them to be beneficial. Humor has quite a few advantages in interpersonal communica communication. It increases enjoyment, it can help release and diffuse tension between participants. It can be used to convey information that would be more difficult to convey in a serious manner. In general, humor is used when we want to communicate a risky information because it can allow us and our interlocutor to kind of save face if it is not well received. For example, joking is a legitimate way for us to test the water, in a manner of speaking, without fearing retaliation. So that if our supervisor does not like what we said, we can always say it was just a joke. Humor can also be used the other way around, as a non-confrontational way of telling people to get their work done. Many situations at work are characterized by uncertainty and ambiguity, so it makes total sense that we use humor to navigate through them. Humor in the workplace can also be used as a means of lessening status differentials between people and also of socializing new employees into the organizational culture. Humor used inside of a team, for example, can show the managers and as a result of everybody's open attitude to work together. Another study found that supervisor's use of humor determines subordinates' use of humor. When a supervisor uses a certain style of humor, such as sarcastic humor, for example, it encourages subordinates to follow suit. 
We often look at the other person for signals as to what types of expression are appropriate in each other's presence. Then there are cases where the management tries to use humor to engage employees and to decrease the power differential, but the employees resist their attempts as a way of expressing their antagonism and resistance towards management. Since humor is already present in the workplace, one might say that what management should work on is not increasing everyone's engagement in it, but rather understanding the meaning of the humor that already exists and to try to channel it in the right places. Here are a few ways we can use humor in our workplace. Number one, humor in the form of anecdotes, practical jokes, friendly teasing, and witty banter. Groups of people or teams typically use one form of humor or another more than the rest. That can be a way of communicating and also enforcing group norms and expectations. So when you first join a team, you might be expected to engage in a particular form of humor to show that you conform to the team's norms. Some types of humor that you could use include a competitive style, where you try to outdo the other in noisiness, a collaborative style where you build on the other's humor or a supportive style where you use humor to strengthen the argument of the previous speaker. Number two, use humor instead of expressing openly opposing opinions. Example, when you disagree with your supervisor's decision, it is generally not well received to express your disagreement, but by using humor, you lighten the atmosphere around the whole discussion and could be easier to be taken into consideration by your supervisor. Number three, use humor in transition points. When you are working on tasks, you might want to incorporate humor in specific points during your work with the team. For instance, while one is entirely focused in the explaining of their idea, might not be the best time to use humor or when a few are discussing about a particular part of the task, might also not be the best time to engage in humor. The best time to use humor is when you are transitioning from one part of the work, like having laid out the problem at hand, to another, like getting different ideas that people might have in solving it. Used at this point can make the entire process less cumbersome and encourage an environment that is open to any kind of idea. Number four, get to know the organizational culture before you decide to engage in a particular type of humor. Two prevailing types of humor are humor that strengthens existing power relationships, also known as reinforcing humor, and humor that challenges existing power relationships or subversive humor. In many organizations, employees could have a tendency to use subversive humor because of power differentials that are present in the workplace. Their purpose in using subversive humor is to undermine someone's status, a group's or the entire organization's attitude, values or goals. This goes both ways. Subordinates can use subversive humor to challenge or criticize their superiors and managers can use subversive humor to comment on their team members' behavior and as a means of controlling them. However, this is entirely dependent on the organization or on individual teams. When the leader of a team shows that they do not like subversive humor, either by simply saying so or by retaliating against someone who uses it, it is appropriate and smart to not engage in it. In this sense, before you decide to use any type of humor, first make sure that it is part of or at least acceptable for any existing organizational culture. Number five, you can analyze humor to understand power structures. A review of sociological studies of humor in the workplace came to the conclusion that humor often reflects the power dynamics within an organization. According to the review, the relative power and goals of people in the workplace determine who tells jokes, who is the target of the jokes, and who laughs at them. Number six, post amusing pictures in the office. In several places that I have worked in, it was entirely acceptable and even encouraged to do this. For example, in the cafeteria, you could see Calvin and Hobbes or Dilbert cartoons. Number seven, in times of tension and conflict, use humor. When a conflict arises, humor might be just the thing to use to mediate between the parties. In such a situation, you could use ready to use jokes or spontaneous humor. The goal of using humor in times of tension and conflict is to change the participant's perspective by removing some tension while providing multiple points of view for the topic at hand so that participants can calm down and realize that their perspective is not the only perspective. 
humor in this sense allows us to also avoid confrontation. And finally, number eight, avoid inappropriate and offensive humor. A few survey studies have found that the use of negative humor, which includes sexual and insulting humor, is related to low ratings of managerial competence and leadership skills. One challenge with humor is it needs trust. If it's a trusted relationship, then we see humorous people positively and often let them get away with jokes that may be offensive or borderline offensive. When there is a lack of trust, humor can have consequences to our credibility. But the biggest challenge with humor is to avoid overuse. A good sense of humor can make a powerful person very humanizing and less intimidating. When powerful people are humorous, we feel like we can relate to that person. Humor reminds us of the commonalities of all workplaces and more generally of all our lives. This is all for this video and I will see you in the next one.